This is just a little gets video on your typical cheapy, most likely Chinese or Taiwanese uh, a consumer grade inverter. In this case, it's a power to go PC300 XT, 300 watt continuous 500 watt peak. But I consider those ratings somewhat dubious because, first off, this looks to be about 14 gauge feeder wire. And second, it had a damaged uh, cigarette lighter plug on it, and those are generally no more than 15 amperes in some special occasions, or some special designs, 20 amperes, but still wouldn't trust them at that. That's where things like other hard wiring or power poles come in. Uh, but, anyways, but then again, it's, again, somewhat cheap the inverter. Internally, it's your fairly standard uh, square wave, uh, modified square wave uh, inverter design. It's just a big 12 volt to 140 volt potential converter. That's what that big transformer is for. And a grass bridge, H bridge. This is or this is the grass bridge to convert the uh, transformer up to 140 volts DC. Then the um, H bridge that actually chops that into the modified square wave output for the uh, that's actually supplied to the receptacles. Now the potential converter runs off of a case, uh, an SEC KA three five two five A switching supply driver. And that drives a pair of, uh, or it drives um, two pair, two MOSFET pairs. Uh, SEC, by the way, is the manufacturer, not part of the uh, part number. Then there's, of course, the, the H bridge, which is some HEI 303 uh, fast recovery diodes, which are needed in this application because it's operating at couple tens of thousands of cycles per second ordinary one in five four x series diodes are not sufficient their uh, ri their rise time is um, or recovery time is far too slow and so you get excessive heating in the diode and they blow up which would be bad uh, then there's the uh, ripple suppression capacitor it's a Samsung hot microfarad 200 volt uh, big electrolytic And uh, other than that, it's just some bunch of miscellaneous control circuitry, like uh, the um, H-Bridge MOSFETs. One interesting thing about these is that these are utilize a pair of devices, one of which is a mirrored pinout version of the other, which is something you don't often see every day. Oh, one other thing about these is that ordinarily you'd expect something like silicone pads for... Um, uh, potential isolation because the heatsink tabs on TO220 devices, or at least most of them, are electrically live. So you want to isolate them uh, generally from the heatsink. Uh, you can occasionally get them with uh, isolated pads, and you can get them with uh, like some like some power tracks. We'll actually have. Uh, in addition to that, they'll actually have non-conductive tabs, or non-electrically conductive uh, mounting tabs, but these obviously don't have them. One thing is that instead of using your typical um, uh, silicone pads, they used cellophane pa cellophane packaging tape, just stuck onto the heatsink, which is, yeah, but then again, Chinese, GB, let's assume it's Chinese. Um, those are just driven by a little MPSA, either four, MPSA 42s or MPSA MPSA 52s. Don't remember exactly which. But uh, those, in turn, are driven by the um, uh, 4013 uh, CMOS um, a dual data flip flop with asynchronous set and asynchronous reset. Then there's a 555 then there's a, a 556 uh, a dual oscillator, which is just a pair of 555s in the same package. One of which is most likely a, um, a multi-vibrator for setting the output frequency. In this case, it would be 60 cycles per second. Although that would probably that that um, uh, multi-vibrator is probably operating 120 cycles per second because there's, then there's two pulses per. Um, 
her because uh, again you've got the two pulses per full cycle to drive the thing and the other one's probably a one shot as far as setting output pulse duty cycle length or something then there's an LM324 a quad operational amplifier and an LM339 uh, quad comparator yeah those are both yeah, quad operational amplifier and quad comparator I think uh, those are for things like over temperature detection like there's this little presume it's a thermistor down in there by stuck to the one of the heat sinks as for over temperature detection there's probably stuff for things like uh, say a couple of divider resistors going over there so those are probably for over potential detection or on the uh, output of the of the uh, switch mode supply Uh, and things like pretty much just control things for uh, detecting abnormal operation conditions or ob abnormal operating conditions. <laughs> then there's one interesting thing about that is that is actually a tie-in to a neutral bus, but they're using a red wire, so that's one weird thing about the thing. And then one thing about and then there's just a and I'm not much too old, too much else to see. There's on this one panel the uh, 25 ampere um, uh, ATC fuse for overcurrent protection. Then there's a big uh, uh, six ampere, or presumably it's a six ampere diode, at least it's the right size, uh, used for a reverse polarity protection because the typical mo mo method employed in inverters like these because again you're dealing with a fairly high current device is what they do is they have a big anti-parallel wire diode after the input fuse so what happens if the thing the reverse polar if the supply polarity is reversed that shorts out the uh, the uh, input blowing the fuse yet at the same time this diode is not conducting aside from the very tiny leak current which is generally on the order of microamperes so it's effectively nothing in this application and again your only potential drop is across the fuse which is ideally not much I think it's a 30 ampere fuse not a uh, I don't know. but um, anyways and then there's this little ripple suppression capacitor on the input which is also what's responsible for the spark that you often see when hooking one of these things up which is why I generally hook one up through a little potential testing probe which is just a little 12 volt incandescent lamp which uh, just slowly charges the capacitor, which is somewhat good for it, and it's also, um, don't get the big spark, which especially if you're dealing with stuff like this, where you may have, although <coughs> ideally you shouldn't, and explosive gases from your battery bank, although if you've got that, then you've probably got ventilation problems, which should be looked at, but that is also why you do not generally hook one of these things up straight through the, uh, straight through a charge controller and which is why they warn you not to do so because either the MOSFETs is something like uh, BC products MPPD 250HV like this or sometimes contactors because I've also seen cases of that's of that uh, current surge killing contactors although this particular guy was using I think it was too many toys 321 or too many toys 123 uh, was using a, a really really cheapy eBay crappy uh, Chinese um, Bosch type automotive relays, but even in that application it lasted two years, but I have seen other cases forget who posted the video on it, but a um, It was a Morningstar 15 ampere maximum power point charge controller and that ganked the uh, MOSFET so Don't hook one of these up straight through and oftentimes like this one It has integrated over potential shutdowns or under potential shutdowns. So generally it's not needed as do all uh, proper inverters or halfway decent inverters like these guys that's a feature that they should all have so it wouldn't be needed to be done in the first place but and then there's this little brushless muffin fan and that's pretty much it not a whole lot else to see it's getting your fairly typical design uh, yeah, it's just fairly standard for what it is